Here we are, another month. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my monthly favorites and a few fails from January. You know, at the beginning of these videos, I always kind of waffle on a bit about how, boy, time flies. However, January was a little slow. Is it just me, or did you guys find that January just seemed to drag on and on? Maybe it's the like post-holiday letdown, I don't know. It just seemed like it, it didn't end. But it finally did. I'll start out with the sunscreen favorites from the month. So this is a oldie but a goodie in terms of my favorites. I, you know, I've, I've talked about it for a while, but a viewer recently sent me a new bottle of it. It's La Roche-Posay Anthelos Shaka Fluid. It's a chemical sunscreen. It's got tinosorb in it and a variety of other chemical filters that we don't have here in the US for broad spectrum. UVA, UVB protection, super lightweight. It's fragrance free. As the name applies, it's just a very nice lightweight liquid fluid. There's no pilling with it. It doesn't look greasy whatsoever. And it's probably one of the easiest sunscreens to wear in my opinion because it goes on and then you completely forget it's even on there and i tolerate it around my eyes just fine no burny eyes it's definitely a favorite uh i wish we had this sunscreen here in the states honestly i don't yeah don't even get me started on the uh on the chemical filter approval issue that we have here but this is a this is a long-standing favorite of mine so thank you to the viewer who sent it to me as a christmas gift i have been loving it yet again this month um and then another chemical sunscreen this one i actually bought on the look fantastic but it is a european sunscreen i've used sunscreens from this brand before it is ultra suns spf 50 plus the purple label one what is it called Anti-photo aging. This is another great chemical sunscreen. This one, however, is a hybrid or combination sunscreen. Not only does it have the chemical filters that offer really good UVA, UVB protection, but it also has titanium dioxide. So because of that, this one does leave a little bit of a cast. On my skin, it's not really noticeable, except for in certain under certain lights. You can kind of see a little bit of a white flash. But if you have a deeper skin tone, this will leave a little bit of cast. I mean, it's not the kind of cast that you would get from like a plain zinc oxide sunscreen, but there is a little bit of a cast there. So if you have a deeper skin tone, do be aware of that. But this one has a very nice matte finish, not greasy. It's a touch shiny, but it is water resistant, free of fragrance, and this, I like the pump packaging too. I'm able to tolerate this one as well around my eyes. You know, I have to say, when it comes to chemical sunscreens outside of the US, this whole burning, stinging, watery eye issue, it's, it's just a non-issue. I swear, it has to do with how chemical sunscreens have to be formulated here. Whatever the other ingredients they have to add to, I don't know, stabilize Ava Benzone or whatever, I think that's really what causes a lot of the burning, especially the burny eye sensation. Um, which is yet another reason why we need the FDA to get on board with these other filters so that we can start making sunscreens that are easier to tolerate. Yeah, I don't get it. Those of you who live in Europe, outside the US, you know, throughout Asia, where you have these other filters, Canada, comment below, do you have this issue of when you put the chemical sunscreens around your eyes, do they seep into your eyes and cause that burning, blurry vision? Because here in the States, it's like 98% of the time they do that. Whereas I find 98% of the time with chemical sunscreens outside of the US, it's just fine and it's not an issue. So yeah, just a little rant there. You guys know how I feel about the chemical sunscreen issue here in the States. I mean, you know, all the clean beauty nonsense that we have to deal with, with fear mongering, these different ingredients, and they're missing the bigger picture that we need better UV filters to protect our skin from the sun because that is what is responsible for the majority of skin aging, hyperpigmentation, and certain wavelengths of UVA, our sunscreens aren't the best at covering. And I think these newer, these other filters that they have in Europe, I think they reach into those UVA wavelengths better. And that's really important for people with deeper skin tones. You know, UVB is what burns the skin and our sunscreens protect against that, no question. But when you start getting into the UVA wavelengths, certain UVA wavelengths definitely play more of a role in the hyperpigmentation issue that plagues people of a deeper skin tone. So yet, you know, more reason why we need better filters here. All right, so love those um, 
This month, I tried out the Topicals products, and overall, I was not impressed with them. The serum, the brightening serum I'm using, and it's fine, I like it. The review should be up at this point, so if you're like, what the heck is she talking about, definitely check that out. Um, and the Light Butter Moisturizer, it's okay. Um, it's kind of like an, a mask, a moisturizing mask. That one's fine. But these sprays were a no-no, were a bust. Um, these just irritated my skin. They're very, they, they're, first of all, they feel sticky. The sticky residue doesn't go away. It's almost like you have sprayed yourself with with uh, spray adhesive. The brightening and clearing mist, you know, I was really optimistic about trying that out. I thought, honestly, I've tried, you know, the spray on lotions and stuff. Like I think Eucerin makes one. And I was thinking it would be that consistency, but with active ingredient, the active ingredients for hyperpigmentation. So it's got niacinamide, kojic acid, arbutin, tranexamic acid, glutathione, which is an antioxidant, licorice root, um, it also has glycolic acid, which, you know, may help with the penetration of those ingredients. But overall, the formula, you know, like I said, it was really sticky, felt like glue, and it was irritating. Like, the next, I, I tried, it, tried it on my back. You know, that's one cool thing about sprays is that it can be hard to get your back, but a spray is, just allows for better application there. So I tried putting it on my back. Yeah, but the next morning, my back was really itchy. They were definitely a fail for me. And they do have fragrance, which if you're trying to fade hyperpigmentation, the fragrance ingredients can be a culprit in worsening hyperpigmentation, either because of irritation, some fragrance compounds, they do increase the dilation of blood vessels and bring in that vascular component that can contribute to like melasma, for example. I don't know, these were not, these were not good in my opinion. And another fail was in the realm of hair care. I got this IGK Crybaby 72 hour frizz control smoothing serum to try out because y'all know how much I love the function of beauty hair serum. So I thought this might be something similar. It's aimed at reducing frizz. And I've been doing, I've been using a blow dryer some days to kind of style my hair a bit. So I got this, you know, kind of thinking that it would smooth down any frizz or flyaways. It's very difficult to apply to the hair, to distribute throughout your hair. It just kind of, at least maybe it's my hair type. It kind of seems to glom onto like a chunk of hairs and then not spread throughout the rest of the hair. You know, I try rubbing it in my hands and everything. And not only that, it doesn't actually seem to help with the frizz. In fact, I kind of think it makes the frizz worse and it smells like Dawn dish soap. It has cyclopentasiloxane, a silicone that definitely can help with imparting shine to the hair. And then it's got coconut oil, which can help with shine, spirulina, I'm not sure what that would do for your hair shafts, but that's in there, and then fragrance. Um, for me, this was just a fail. It didn't help with this, the frizz, it didn't really even help with smoothing, it just kind of looked greasy in patches of my hair and smelled like Dawn dish soap. So that was, that was a fail. So those are the main like products that I wanted to bring up as standout successes, which are the sunscreens and then standout fails. But I did review some brands for you all, you know, the Topicals, the um, Coco Kind this month I reviewed and the Elf. And those were, you know, not complete fails and not complete wins. So they didn't make it into this video, but I did try out, you know, some other products this month, just not, just not anything that I felt compelled to talk about again in this video, but check out those reviews if you miss them. Lifestyle, I did read a really good book this month. I started actually in December. It's called The Silent History. I got it at the library and it is a page turner. It is about a generation of children that don't speak um, and they don't speak at all. They don't really make any sound, they're silent. And it's told through a series of narratives from different perspectives of people like either their caregivers, teachers, you know, people in the community, what have you. And, you know, it really causes a lot of distress for people. They become kind of ostracized, this group of children. It's interesting how they're treated because basically they're different. It was really good. It's kind of a dystopian, futuristic story. And my understanding is that actually it's written by three people. Um, Eli Horowitz, who was a publisher of McSweeney's, and Matthew Derby and Kevin Moffat. They wrote it. And I guess 
originally, it was released as a series of the, you know, because there are like little, little narratives. I guess it was released as part of like an app or something, uh, according to this. But I just got the library, you know, I saw this at the library and it was like an impulse pickup. I swear, the library, if I go in there looking for a specific book, then oftentimes I'm not that, you know, the book ends up being a flop for me. But if I go to the library, not really looking, especially if they're about to close and I'm kind of, you know, in need of something to read, it's always a win. Whatever I just randomly pick up as they're like saying, the library will be closing in five minutes. It always ends up being a win. I rather enjoy this. It's a great one. You know, I like reading personally at night before I fall asleep. I go in my bed, turn out all the lights, I have a little book lamp and I read, I find that. Moving my eyes back and forth helps me get sleepy and it gets me away from the blue light from my phone and it really helps me fall asleep. This was, this was a good one. So highly recommend that. And then as far as movies this month, I watched some documentaries on Amazon Prime. I watched one called Out of Sight, which was really good. It is about a, it takes place in a psychiatric hospital, uh, a hospital for uh, people who have committed criminal acts kind of as a result of their mental illness. Very good, it was re really good. I especially liked it because back in college, I actually worked in a psychiatric hospital. So it kind of like reminded me of a lot of my experience working in that hospital. So I rather enjoyed it just you know from personal experience. And uh, I highly recommend it, it was very good. Because I watched that, Amazon Prime suggested to me of two minds about bipolar disorder. That likewise was really good. I feel as though you hear about depression, you hear about anxiety, and you'll hear some people mention that they have bipolar disorder, but I don't think people in the general public are as aware of what that can entail and especially the mania, how dangerous that can be. So this documentary, you know, it interviews a variety of people who deal with bipolar disorder, and it's interesting, you know, to learn about the things that they have had to go through as a result of their illness and, you know, the struggles that they've had. So I really enjoyed that. I watched a documentary on Jennifer Aniston on Amazon Prime that also was pretty good. I've always liked Jennifer Aniston. Everything that, you know, all the scrutiny that she gets and has gotten over the years with her marriage and all that, she always holds herself together very well and she doesn't ever really, you know, she's not overly emotional. She's very diplomatic, it seems, and she always is very professional, which I, I think is why I like her. And she's just very relatable and always has maintained that. So the documentary was was pretty good. If you, you know, were into Friends, I think you'll enjoy it. Friend, is it Friends or wasn't it like kind of having another renaissance? People were getting into it. It's odd, you know, the shows I was really into like in the 90s, I can't watch again. I just, I don't, like I tried watching Grey's Anatomy again. Was that in the 90s? Maybe the early 2000s. I tried watching that again and it was like, how was I so into this? I tried watching Will and Grace again and it was just not as funny anymore. And I tried watching again Friends and it's okay to have in the background, but I just could not get into it. You know what shows though I used to watch as I go on a tangent in the, in the 2000, early 2000s that I think I would watch again? Um, Everwood, that was a good show. Everwood and One Tree Hill, I loved that. I liked Gilmore Girls, but I'm not as strong of a Gilmore Girls fan as I think most people are. For me, it was more One Tree Hill for sure. I guess I related to One Tree Hill because I grew up in South Carolina, and of course One Tree Hill was in North Carolina, but there's a lot of, there's some similarities. So I just kinda, I don't know, I related to that show more, I guess. I also really liked Dawson's Creek, but that was the 90s. <laughs> Anyways, maybe I would enjoy watching those shows again. I don't get Netflix anymore, and so whatever shows are popular on there right now, I would not be watching, but let me know in the comments if there's like a TV show on Amazon Prime that I should check out that I would like. All right, so it's February, you know, that means Valentine's Day, and okay, public service announcement, you're not gonna get down in the dumps about Valentine's Day. If you're alone, you're gonna be happy. You're gonna put on a happy face. <laughs> I am the Valentine's cheerleader, okay? I love Valentine's Day because who doesn't like hearts and candy and candles and flowers and like pink stuff? And who cares if you're alone? I mean, you can enjoy those things all the more. So this is a great, 
a Valentine's treat for you or somebody else. Um, I have really been enjoying these. I enjoyed them a lot over the holiday and then throughout January. This is yet another bag. I get these on iHerb. They are chocolate covered strawberries. You always see the chocolate covered strawberries in like the grocery store around Valentine's Day. At least at my Kroger, they like have this whole elaborate chocolate fondue thing and they're dipping the strawberries in there and then you can buy them or whatever. Just get these. <laughs> they're really good. It's like a dried strawberry inside. They are delicious. They're vegan, obviously. Yeah, they're dark chocolate. So if you don't like dark chocolate, I do think they have a milk chocolate version. I'm not sure. I've had this brand makes chocolate covered uh, dried blueberries. They used to sell them at Costco, I think. The blueberry ones are pretty good, but I have to say the strawberry, ugh, amazing. So I've rather been enjoying these. And like I said, I'm the Valentine's Day cheerleader. Yeah, don't get down on Valentine's Day. Just buy yourself something or make yourself something or do something for yourself. It's, it's, it's a day of indulgence, either indulging somebody else in something or yourself, okay? So just enjoy it. Like life is short. Chocolate covered strawberries, good one. All right, you guys know how much I love my uh, Sun Goddess Matcha Tea from Peak. And also the uh, Ginger Digestion Elixir I really like having at night. And this past month, so I mentioned I wanted to get some of these glass mugs and a viewer actually sent them to me. They are bottom, though I like to say Badoom. Same maker as my French press coffee maker. I think you can get these on Amazon because whoever sent them to me, thank you by the way, um, they came from Amazon. And so you can get them on Amazon. They came in a two pack. I just put my fingerprints all over them, but they really hold the heat well. I was apprehensive that they wouldn't. And they're also really lightweight. They, they're fun because especially with like matcha tea, it's kind of cool to see your beverage. I don't know uh, if you're into that kind of thing. So now I wanna get some teas that are like those teas that blossom. Have you ever seen those? I think that would be really cool in this. <clears throat> and then last but not least, I got a new pair of slippers for Christmas from uh, Vionic. You guys know how much I love Vionic slippers. Their shoes seem really good too, but I think a lot of them have leather in them. Uh, but the reason I like these so much is they're really supportive of your arch, your soles and everything. And they're very durable. They last forever. They're really comfortable. Highly recommend these. Um, I talked about them in my dry cracked heels video and I'm loving this new pair that I got as a Christmas gift. I like the pink color. I've always been a fan of pink, but I also have a pair that is blue and I have another pair that's like Buffalo check. So I'm kind of glad to have the pink, especially for February. Cause like I said, I am the Valentine cheerleader. I love Valentine's day. All right, you guys, that's everything that I enjoyed over the month of January. Like I said, it was kind of pokey and slow, lasted a long time. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Time usually flies. So I'm happy to have time go by a little bit more slowly. Let me know in the comments how your January went. Did you have anything in your January that was particularly notable? Let me know. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.